Some big teams are making their moves up the ladder while others have been found out and left behind. There's so much to unpack. This is Access All Areas, thanks to Crypto.com. Oh, Gunston was superb. Shut the gate. Goal, Brisbane. And that does it. What a classic. Five roaming, snapping, and sending the crowd into raptures. Hoist the high left foot ball. Oh, oh. Kick, on the line. kick on the line. Great to have your company on this Monday, Damien Barrett and Matthew Lloyd with me. Welcome, gents. Good morning, Matt. Let's start with Collingwood because once again they prove that they are the masters of the final quarter. They get over the Swans in a tight contest, but it was their final term kicking five goals to one Lloydie. They steamrolled the Swans. Oh, they did. Uh, super fit. I'm not sure what's wrong with me, Nat, but uh, they're the side I enjoy watching most. <laughs> is Collingwood with the way they play the game. And, yeah, seven goals to one after half time. Sydney are quite a dour type team. Just couldn't score well enough. And you see the panic there that set in before the Ginneman goal. This is just one of the freakish goals. Day Celebrate this photo. It's gold for you, isn't it? Uh, no, I wouldn't have thought so. Yeah, Ashcroft, Ashcroft, has, Ashcroft has still Ashcroft got him. still got him. Oh, it's in the conversation, surely. Well. But uh, no, they're just an amazing side and they just overpower you, they overwhelm you and, and you see here the panic that sets in. And their running ability late in games just blows teams away week after week. They do many things, Collingwood, and they continue to, to find a way to be the highlight out of a round of footy, and they do it through different means. And, and one of the different means yesterday was, was this man who's on the end of this chain here to kick one of his five goals, three of those five goals coming in the last quarter, Brody Majek. He's 30 years of age, Lordy. He was bypassed in seven full drafts. He was playing football for the first time at the age of 25 in the year they made the grand final in, and, and he's never looked more at home. And they got him from Port Melbourne to play in defence for them. And yeah. he's become a star foot, an absolute warrior. He hasn't had the best year this year, but he got some rewards on the weekend for how hard he's worked. Do you feel yeah. like there's still room to grow for the Pies? Like they haven't quite hit their ceiling yet? Kane Corn said he worries about their forward line come finals time. That's yeah, probably okay. the one area. To see Maicha kick five, they would have liked that because yeah, can McStay, uh, Cox, Maicha, it's probably the only question mark, can they stand up the big forwards come finals time? Um, Mason Cox coming back in, yeah. he'll need some, some work yeah. to bet it down, won't he? Cameron, they'll get back at yeah. some stage, you'd think. I've, I've got little concern that I think mm. what they're doing. Yeah. It won't be sustainable the way they've done it. They'll have their, their lulls, but when it comes to the pointy end, they'll, they'll be as dangerous as anyone yeah. in my eyes. Now, early in the game, there was a fair bit of niggle. The Swans seemingly going after Nick Dacos. Damo, what did you make of this tactic? Look, I don't mind it now. In fact, I, I embrace it like a lot of people do. But if you're going to do it, you have to back it up. And you know you have to go to that footy war and sustain it for the entire contest. And they weren't able to do that. I mean, this is all pre-match. And then this happened early in the match. And Ryan Clark, who had the, the assignment of mm. Nick Dacos, managed to kick that great goal. And that's fine and that's good. And that's maybe a natural reaction to that goal, Lordy. But you, you saw Nick Dacos didn't want to bar of it. And, and no surprise at all. We'll see Braden Maynard <laughs> then come and deal with it alongside his teammates. And then it goes on. And the War's now getting serious. And again, Nick Dacos doesn't want part of it, but others do. And, and, and it's a bit like what the Dockers did with Rory Lobb a few weeks ago, Lordy. You can do it at the start of a game. You've got to sustain it. And it's often the, the team who doesn't loses in the end of the day. Yeah, uh, Nick Dacos still had the second most disposals for Collingwood. You know, Scotty Penelbury probably gets off the chain because they're so worried about yeah. Nick Dacos. So it's a real luxury that you've got a kid that is that good mm. in his second year of football that clubs want to worry about him, yet you've got... Josh Dacos doing his thing, steal side bottoms, Scotty Penelbury. So they had to deal with it for years and years, Penelbury and side bottom. Now it's Nick Dacos that yeah. everyone wants to worry about. And the thing that, that he's 20 years of age, and that's yeah. what they're setting out to do before the game even starts. And, and to know that Collingwood actually wants the tag now put on him, because they know that that yeah. obviously creates a hole yeah. in another part mm. of their structure. And he embraces the yeah. tag, and as you said, he still had a big last quarter yeah. to play another key role a different way mm. in a win. Just on the Swans, are we concerned about them, Lloydy. I mean, yeah. real concerns outside of just missing a couple of players like Rampy and still uh, Paddy McCartney. Yeah, I think so. 11th on the ladder after round eight and I don't think they have a real weapon. I think last year we saw all these kids coming through like Goulden and Mills and Heaney and McInerney and, 
and these guys, but I wouldn't say any of them have enhanced their reputation this year at all. Yeah, it's a fair point. Yeah. They've thrown away two games, haven't they? The GWS game that they threw away, the Port Adelaide game, they'd argue they threw that away as well. So I'm not as um, worried about them in the bigger picture, but mm. they're letting games slip and it's now a battle and they don't have a back line, which I still think is the, the large reason they're losing matches. They have Frio, North and Carlton in the next three before the bye. So if they're any good, they should be winning all three. Mm. All right, well, the Saints cruise to their sixth win of the season with a 30-point victory over North Melbourne yesterday. But there was a bizarre moment during the game and I think that uh, North Melbourne co-captain Jai Simpkin would probably not like to remember this one too fondly because he rips out the GPS here of Mateus Filippo and then throws it, Damo. He's just going to be better than that, Nat. And, and again, you can see, and we just showed there, the remonstrating of, of, of Jai himself and, and Shields and Zeeble asking the umpire why they, he did what he did. Now, it's simple. He had to pay that free kick the way he did it and, and, and the penalty that comes with it. And, and as a leader of that footy club, it just has to be better. You saw the scoreline. They're 11 points down, having not scored a goal at all in the, se in the first two quarters. They're in the game and then that sacked, sapped the life out yeah, of them. Yeah, I'm not sure why he's arguing. You throw anything. You throw a mouth mm. guard, you throw yeah. Yeah, anything, you, it's a 50. So, yeah, undisciplined. And if, was... and if he's broken that GPS, Nat, if I'm the Saints, yeah. I'm invoicing him yeah. too. So. <laughs> it was a bit petulant, something I my three-year-old yeah. would yeah. do um, at home. <laughs> well, now... we know this <laughs> <laughs> There weren't too many highlights from this game, but an 18-year-old in Mateus Philippa, who we absolutely love, one of the top draft picks uh, that the Saints managed to get last year, took an absolute screamer, Lloydie. Oh, it was sensational, as you said. There once wasn't too many highlights in this game, but he's a kid who's having to do a lot. There's been no king. Uh, in the side. Memory's been in and out throughout the season. Uh, the uh, players suspended. Caminiti suspended. Yeah. So he, he's done a good... Took six big grabs yesterday, uh, did Filippo. Well, yesterday at Adelaide Oval, the power extended its winning streak to six straight games now after they beat the Bombers by five points. Lloydie Essendon had most of the control in that first half. How did Port turn it around? Uh, they just mauled them through the midfield. So in the end it was... Uh, they kicked 12 goals, 20. So the better side won, in my opinion. So Essendon was the better side at, at to half time, but after half time it was all Port Adelaide. They were tougher, they were harder, uh, and in the end they had 18 more inside 50s, 32 scoring shots to 22, and the usual suspects Horn Francis, uh, Butters, Rosie, and then poor Thirk Thatcher. Again, he had Hawkins the week before, and Big Dixon, even though he's on one leg, just overpowered him really for size and power and strength, as you'll see here. There's a result to this team, isn't there, which, which had yeah. not necessarily always been there, and, and they're just giving themselves a chance, Lord. It didn't go their way early in this game, and, and Essendon, to its credit, found a way through Port, but they get to three-quarter time, they regroup, and, and they then grind it out, and, and sometimes you can shape seasons the way they are approaching their football, Matt, and that wasn't what they were able to do last year. This year it's a stark difference, and, and they've given themselves a live crack at a flag through being able to do it. Yeah, they certainly have. There are a couple of big hits too in this mm. game. Textbook bump. So I want you to talk me through this, Lloydie, because we thought the bump was dead, but perhaps not. Yeah, it's a big risk and what these players have done. So Dylan Shield there, that, that was a beautiful hit there and it's great. What about Merritt's kicking? I would love to know. <laughs> Is he the most skillful player in the game? He'd have to be very, very close with the way beautiful. he finished that one. He was arguably Essendon's best again, but it's, it's a risk. But he gets, gets away with it here. So and there the is toughest time of both players. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rosie included. Yeah. yeah, and then this one, this hit, uh, this guy Butters goes as hard as anyone. And he hits Nick Martin, who didn't have his best day, Nick, yesterday. So he, very good going forward, but didn't defend as well as he would have liked Nick Martin. But uh, yeah, the better side won yesterday. There's nothing like a bump when the whole crowd just yeah. goes, oh, yeah, it was a yeah. absolutely love sound, that. Yeah. <laughs> to Gold Coast now, and the Suns almost beat a flag contender in the D's on Saturday afternoon. Afternoon, and to be honest, they probably should have won Damo, but are we patronising the Suns by, I guess, lauding their effort and saying, oh, yeah, they nearly got close again? Well, I don't, Matt, as you know, I, I don't. And, and I, I may be too harsh and, and maybe in a minority and being too harsh on them, but I just look at an opportunity missed yet again for a club that is crying out to finally make a statement and, and push up into the reaches of the eight in the ladder where they had a good game and, and yes, ticks on a lot of fronts in what they did against Melbourne. Mm. But when it came to the crunch, they were not good enough yet again. Again. And they can walk away and be proud and be gallant in what they did. But at some stage, they're just going to have to grind away and find a way to win those games that they just don't win and, and therefore don't ever change their own narrative. Yeah, I understand that. Not being sucked into them before and then they fall away. But we'll see because uh, it was a great win last week against Richmond at Marvel. I know Richmond are struggling too. Yeah. They backed it up again. 
So they've got West Coast in Perth. So let's see if they can get on a run now after playing better the past four. Lloydie, what about the Ds? Because they just seem to keep rolling on. They're six and two now. Do you have them as your top seed? Uh, I'd still back Collingwood in if they okay. have to play each other and they'll play each other in the next month or mm. so. But, and the, but what they have got is a full complement of players. Mm. A lot of injuries across a lot of teams, but Melbourne look to have a, a full list. Uh, players fit. They'll be at the top four, but we'll see uh, come finals time if they can match the pie's running power. A few times this year we've seen teams using the bottom sides to, I guess, <laughs> find some form and get some momentum to kickstart their season. The Hawks seem to be playing everyone into form at the moment. They did it to Geelong and I wonder, Damo, if they will uh, play Frio into form because this was a much better Frio outfit that we saw on Saturday night. Well, there's Luke Jackson, the man who's on a, a lot of money playing the way that the Dockers wanted to play. And, and no coincidence in that, it does come in round eight after a torrid season against Hawthorne. So, again, that's not to take away what he did. And, and that man there, Lordo, starting as the sub, Nat Fife, mm. and, and getting a full quarter and a bit into his uh, system. Neil Rasmus, uh, number 10 pick after the 2021 season. Uh, they've decided to, to pick him, Nat, and, and you can see why he was chosen so highly. Yeah, he was just a midfield bull um, in his draft year as well. Really, really um, highly touted. And I think I think you've just got to play play mm. him now because you could persist with someone like a Will Brody, but I reckon Neil Rasmus, I, I really like what he's shown. He's a talented kid, so keep playing the him, The midfield looks good, doesn't it? Uh, we throw that off the back of Sarong, Brayshaw, Rasmus. It's just the forward line. Yeah. Against stronger sides, can they kick a winning score with what they've got? And, and in his defence, Brashaw was really banged up in the yeah. opening part of the yeah. season and, and he's, and he's yeah. not now and, and hence he was best on ground on the weekend. Now it was a very cold night in Canberra on Saturday and the Bulldogs got the win but it was the battle in the middle that was most intriguing. Damo, your man, the superstar and Marcus Bontempelli on one side and then the rising star and Tom Green on the other. Yeah, it's a great battle, wasn't it? And, and uh, look, I'll focus on um, on Bontempelli that I... Oh, look, they're 33 votes he got in 2021. I, it, was, it was Brownlow medal worthy winning in, in any other season bar that one that Ollie Wines had 36. And he's putting together the season that um, he's probably got votes or, or, or near the votes in every game he's played this year. And, and he, he went up against Tom Green and well, he still stood tall and strongest and, and delivered beautifully. Yeah, between them, 70 disposals, 22 wow. clearances and 17 score involvements. And I'll, I'll focus on Green then. Uh, <laughs> if you were Tasmania, like, I'm just saying, like, he's the type of player that you'd go after because tough, uh, now kicking goals, uh, leadership written all over him. He's spoken during the week about he got dropped late last year. So he's had to really earn this because mm. a lot of people have looked at him as mm. OK. How many big bodies can we have in there? But now he's doing so many other things and he didn't. So he's officially well. arrived now in your eyes oh, and, and it's so. here to stay. Oh, yeah. I think he'll be, yeah, it, yeah, one of the best midfielders in the game over the coming years, yeah. All right, you heard it first here yeah. on yeah. Access All Areas. Now, the reigning premiers made it six straight wins as they beat the Crows at GMHBA Stadium. They were missing seven players from probably their best side and then they lose their skipper in Patrick Dangerfield as well to a hamstring injury. And when they needed someone to stand tall, mm. Damo, it was Tanner Bruin, especially in the last three minutes. Yeah, so look at the, the time on the clock and look at the score. The game is still to be decided. And there were four occasions where he just willed himself into it, stopped the contest there by grabbing the ball and then creates a, a play here, Lordo. And we're about to see him cash in on the end of some hard work by kicking the sealer, the well and truly, truly sealer. It's what, exactly what Chris Scott would have wanted to see from him in that moment, in that game. Sometimes you just need opportunity. And Dangerfield goes out of the game. OK, let's get him into the centre bounce, which he probably would never get to the opportunity to do in mm. dangers there. So uh, Holmes has improved out of sight, being an inside midfielder. Yeah. Blixarves is having an amazing year again in the centre bounce. So even though they've got injuries, they just keep finding new players who step up Geelong. So a young cat steps up and on the flip side, mm. Lloydie, it was Adelaide and a couple of their leaders that really hurt them in the end. Yeah, Dawson had normally nailed this uh, inside 50. is probably the best kick inside 50 in the game. He misses it when they were pressing 18 points down with seven minutes to go. And then it was this undisciplined act from Rory Laird, which is unlike him. Just shows the frustration uh, in the game there. So that this was 18 points down, undisciplined free kick. So that probably sums up the Crows at the moment. They do a lot right, but just can't quite um, execute when they need to. Yeah, so, uh, just lacking that polish, they weren't are, they, at the they end? Are, yeah. All right, time now to get some early bold tips ahead of next week, thanks to the official AFL tipping competition brought to you by Crypto.com. Carlton and the Dogs on Saturday nights, Lloydie. I'll go to the Western Bulldogs. Yeah. I'm going to stick with Carl. Oh, you and keep I, sticking I, with him every week. I know, I know, I know, but I'm going to give him one more chance. <laughs> one more chance. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh my God, you're a sucker yeah. for punishment. Uh, the Crows and the Saints demo Sunday. 
Oh, I'm going to stick with the Crows too. Yeah, I'll mm. stick with the Crows as well. OK, yeah. let's get to quick gives now. And Lloydie, we start with you. Whose list would you rather, Fremantle or Hawthorne? I don't have to think about this long, Matt. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Fremantle's for sure. Uh, They're at different stages. Yeah. Uh, back to you. Uh, should the people receiving lifetime bans uh, vilification be publicly named? Well, I thought long and hard about this one, but I'm going to say no because I feel like naming these people probably elicits more hate and hurt and perhaps even violence and there's just enough of that going mm. around. So I feel like let's just keep it private for now. Uh, Damo, cool. do you think we'll have a mid-year trading period? next season. Yeah, I do. It'll be the domain of whoever gets the footy operations role. I, I expect that to be Brendan Gale. And, and I know there is a, a real intent from the AFL, Lordy, to, to bring it in and, and hopefully, in, in I think, in a player movement sense, as early as next year. Nat, uh, that's a Lordy. Uh, Carlton, legitimate flag contender or not? I gather yeah, no, yeah, the way you yeah. laughed at I, me. I thought you were going <laughs> to say, are they a legitimate finals contender? So it's certainly not a flag contender. They, they fall short badly against the best sides in the competition. To Nat, your biggest pet hate when sitting in the air at the footy? Those people who commentate the whole game. Like, the whole way through, they're just talking and they're yapping and they're yapping and they're yapping. I just can't stand it. It's annoying. So annoying. There are so many things that annoy me uh, at the footy, but we don't have a whole show for that. Um, to both of you, name a player you previously didn't rate but has exceeded your expectations. We'll start with you, Damo. Uh, didn't rate is a bit a bit hard, but what I love this year is, is Cole Langford's mm. role at Essendon and the way he just becomes a Mr fix it, inclusive of yesterday, nearly yep. winning the game um, in a couple of different roles. So, yeah, that, that's my nomination there now. I'm on the role-playing theme too. What Mason Wood's doing for St yeah. Kilda uh, is unbelievable. What he's, he's super yeah. fit and plays such a key role for Ross Lyon. The big question now when it comes to quick gives, now that the King's coronation is behind us, and I'm sure we were all watching mm. that and not the footy knot, uh, it's, yeah. is it time for Australia to become a republic? <laughs> Do we go first? Yeah, you go first. Yeah. I've got no I, idea. I voted... <laughs> 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 I, I voted yes for the referendum back in the late uh, 90s, Nat, for yes. Yeah. So I've now changed. I don't care. And I reckon there's enough ceremony attached to the role that it doesn't matter. And I think it would only create a uh, another panel of corporate fat cats to become the, the, the Republic. So, so, no, leave it as it is. Is my okay, long-winded answer. you have no yeah. idea. Yeah. <laughs> and, and statement, and don't care. I don't care either. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Nat? Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, we should be a Republic. Yeah, Let's why? go with that. Yeah. Oh, just because who cares about... Uh, the only thing I like is The Crown on Netflix. So, <laughs> let's, who cares about the Royals? All right, speaking of players that have, surpri that have surprised us, yeah. how about Jack Payne keeping Charlie Curno to one goal, Lloyd? And they needed to find a replacement for Marcus Adams and he just is growing each week yeah. with confidence. He was one I was never sold on whether he was good enough. And uh, on the weekend, I was there watching this one live. He has power, he has athleticism, he's dynamic. Everything you need to play on Charlie Curno, he's got. And yes, the ball, the way it comes into Charlie's horrendous at times, and they just bomb it in there. And he has to make a lot of the plays, Charlie Curno, because I don't think there's many much class in that Carlton mm. midfield. But Payne just has all the athleticism mm. to go with every forward. Mm. Time now for our crypto brave play. And it wasn't a great weekend for the Blues or the Eagles, but both sides had terrific examples of bravery there, a couple of courageous marks. I like that from just, Harry Mackay. It's just unconditional, wasn't it, Lordy? Yeah. Way he went for it, as it always oh. is for this man, Tom Barris, who uh, just went back and, and just put his own health on the line yeah. and, and came through, as he so often does, with that uh, courageous act. Tom Monaghan nearly lost his life doing that, but Barras just never hesitates mm. week after mm. week. Yeah. Yep, absolute mm. courage. Now, there's been a fair bit of talk about Joe Danher not lowering his mm. eyes at times and blazing away at goal. And, Lloydie, this was a beautiful goal, but if we take a look at a different angle, we can see Zach Bailey yeah. here just going absolutely <laughs> bananas and then he... Absolutely rinses him. Oh, he's very lucky he kicked it because uh, Bailey in the end couldn't say too much afterwards. But uh, it's very funny because Joey, remember Joey blasted Hipwood earlier in the year? He did too. And I reckon Joey's passed one since. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And I also love uh, Coach Cam. And if we could have one on yeah. the coach's box yeah. and just watch that, this is like perfect viewing, Damo. <laughs> no, he's cruising there. And how are you going, Jeb? <laughs> what are we doing tonight after we've uh, belted Carlton? We're going to go out in the town, are we? And then it gets a little bit tense later on. And uh, Jed's been wild and he's yeah. patrolling the room up the back now. It's uh, what they go through uh, uh, during the course of a game. But, um, no, I, I love seeing that tile style of, of emotion. Yeah, he was just pacing up and down, wasn't he? I coach school footy and I have a migraine after a game, so I can't imagine what these guys... Do you manage to keep through. your emotions in yes, check? Yes, I'm, I'm big on that, yeah. OK, yeah. all right, we like Thank it. That's all yeah. we have time for on Access All Areas. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you again next week.